Mr. Speaker, the loyal opposition is entitled to their opinion, but they're not entitled to their facts. Let's go through some facts. My ranking member may not remember January 1st. I know it was a long time ago, over a month. On January 1st, with the President's blessing and insistence, we raised the taxes on the highest income producers and on family businesses by 5 percent on their, worker, on their uh, ordinary income and by 5 percent on their capital gains. Capital gains would be a 33 percent increase from 15 to 20 percent. These are not small increases. These were huge. I didn't vote for them. My opponent did. did. My uh, ranking member did. I didn't vote for them because, in fact, the President deliberately said, oh, no, we're not going to touch anything else in taxes except to stick it to the rich, and he did, and this body did. That was a decision. But I hope my ranking member will remember that a month ago and a few days, we had a huge tax increase of the President's choosing. It had been offered up by the, by the Republicans to work together to find loopholes, but that was rejected in favor of a stick-it-to-the-rich tax increase that he chose. There was $500 billion worth of revenue that would have been generated per year, $5 trillion over 10 years, if the President had been willing to go back to Bill Clinton-level taxes on all, he was not. So it is the height of hypocrisy to come in 30 days, actually in about one day, and begin talking about the next round of tax increases on a relatively limited group of our population, the 1 percent or 3 percent, and in fact start reducing their ability to have working capital for new oil exploration, for new natural gas exploration, the thing that the President just a few days ago, standing in front of where you are today, lauded as great. We're becoming oil self-sufficient. We are natural gas self-sufficient. We are, in fact, able to move to cleaner fuels for our, for our energy. But let's break something else down. My opponent, I keep saying opponent, he's my ranking member, but he is the loyal opposition here. He talks about $100 billion. I think we need to break it down. That's $100 billion over 10 years. It's not even $10 billion in the first year. His $100 billion of sacrifice, many of those sacrifices won't even occur because people aren't going to necessarily be here for all 10 years. Because next year or the year after, this Congress might be able to increase pay to make up for what we have to hold back this year. We may have those, that good time and good employment and ability to do that. And I would join with the member to try to find that way. But the fact is, what actually is being asked to be given up by the typical federal worker, the one that the President is calling such a huge sacrifice, is $274 per employee per year. And with that, I'd like to recognize the gentleman from Florida who has been a leader on this issue and who understands the hardworking men and women of the federal workforce and why this is necessary, uh, the gentleman from Florida.